research and discovery. Futurists. Strangford Lock in County Down, Northern Ireland, the largest inlet in the British Isles. Much of the lock consists of gentle waters, but where the inlet narrows, the tides are squeezed through a narrow opening, creating fast-flowing currents. Strangford Narrows was recognised as an ideal location for a tidal generator, a technology that at the time was only partially proven and had no commercial application. Angela Rowbottom, Marine Current Turbines Director of Engineering, was brought in to take the idea from paper to reality. The job of building the 1,000 tonne structure was given to a Belfast shipyard. Seagen left the shipyard on March the 30th and began its journey to Strangford Lock aboard a heavy lift crane barge. In early April it was placed in position and the job of securing it to the seafloor was begun. Seagen turbines work like submerged windmills, but instead of being driven by air, they're driven by water. They can be installed in the sea at places with high tidal current velocities or in places with fast enough continuous ocean currents. We sighted the turbine here for a number of reasons, um, one of which is, a, is that it's a very aggressive site from a tidal stream velocity point of view. It's one of the most aggressive tidal streams around the coast of the UK. When fully operational, Seagen's twin rotors will operate for up to 20 hours per day, producing electricity both on ebb and flood tides. It will produce four times more electricity than any tidal stream project currently in operation. This unit has a rated uh, capacity to generate of uh, 1.2 megawatts, so to put that into context, that would feed the, provide the electricity needs of uh, a, a large village of, say, 800 homes. If you were to put a number of wind, uh, tidal turbines together in a farm, then you've got a technology which is, or the size of uh, capacity of a farm, which is, certainly could compete with, with uh, offshore wind farms today. But CGEN is not only required to produce commercial amounts of electricity, it needs to do it without impacting the environment. Strangford Lock is a conservation area, home to many bird and animal species. While Seagen's footprint above the surface of the lock is minor, environmentalists are concerned that its massive 16-metre rotors operating beneath the surface could represent a hazard to curious species like seals. The main species or uh, animals that are interest here are the common seal, or the harbour seal as it's sometimes called, and also the benthos, that is the animals that live on the seabed itself. Those, those two areas, but particularly the common seal, because we know that the common seal population in the whole of Western Europe is declining quite significantly, and obviously that has to be, that species has to be really at the top of the list of concern. Graham Savage has lived and worked by the lock for many years. He acknowledges that compromises must be reached between conservationists and renewable power companies. There will have to be some sort of balancing, perhaps, of the environmental requirements and the requirements for renewable resources. Obviously, that then becomes a political issue, how much emphasis you put on the environment versus the need to generate power cheaply and also at an ecologically friendly uh, level. But it isn't only tidal currents that provide the potential for energy from the sea. There are also the waves. The Palamis Wave Energy Converter is one system designed to use the energy of the waves to produce electrical power. It consists of a series of semi-submerged cylindrical sections linked by hinged joints. 
three Palamas devices are soon to be deployed in Portugal in the world's first commercial wave farm. Wave Dragon has been under test off the Danish coast since 2003. Its trials now completed, the company says it will be ready with a commercial demonstrator next year. Wave Dragon's inventor acknowledges that wave energy has been slow to develop. Actually, wave energy is, is, it is a little bit more difficult to develop than, than uh, than wind energy because as uh, wind has been on, on the market, you could say that, for a thousand years and uh, it was quite easy to convert wind turbines to, to power producing uh, turbines. Wave energy is starting from scratch and, uh, and uh, hard work has only been put into the sector for 20 years or so. So uh, we need 10 more years to, to compete with, uh, with wind turbines. Wave Dragon's chairman, Hans Christian Sorensen, says wave energy offers enormous potential. As ocean energy waves uh, can be harvested along the western coast of Europe, the western coast of the state, and Chile, and Australia, and New Zealand, you have a huge amount of people just very close to the energy source which means that you can use wave energy locally and you can cover more than half of all electricity demand in the world by simple deployment of uh, wave energy. In fact you can harvest much more than that uh, if you go more offshore but then of course the grid connection will be more uh, expensive. Well, our plan is to, to deploy the first large wave dragon next year in, in Wales. And uh, it would be nominal around 7 megawatts, so it's, it's quite a big plant. Once the technology establishes itself, once we've proven this uh, commercial demonstrator, then and the, we start to uh, interest developers and excite developers, then the, 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 the unit cost will come down hopefully the same cost curve that wind energy did, and therefore it will grow exponentially. The future security of our electricity supplies will depend to a great extent on renewables, wind power, solar power, and now ocean power, which may hold more potential than all the others put together. <laughs>